Well, hello everybody and welcome back to the third episode of Bearwood. In this video, we're going to be building out our residential areas, hopefully getting some walls to counteract the impending raids that are coming our way. And we're going to organize and expand our industry. Lots to do, lots to do. And of course, our mascots, the immortal oxen, will be watching us all the way. Let's get back to it. Alright, one thing I actually want to change in the design here is I would like to have two tiles between the housing on each side. So I'm going to shift everything up two tiles. So I'm going to delete this road. All right, and we're accumulating a lot of waste. So I actually need to show you this. I'm going to put the compost yard. So see right here, it has a huge desirability negative. I'm going to be moving this in the future, but I do want to keep the compost yard as close as possible to these houses. Just going to place it over here and I'll move it later. Now, the reason I decided to do this buffer was not because I necessarily needed to. What it will do is it will allow me to make more mistakes because I can easily increase desirability through just stacking decorations. And also, I think it just will look nicer. I'm trying to go for a nice, clean build. But the main thing here is you have two lines between these houses uh, where you put desirability, no spacing between these two houses. But as you can see, it's a perfect fit. Once I expand this marketplace, I'll be able to hit this corner piece right here. All right, we're being raided. But now that we got everything in place, I'm going to put the second house there and then we are going to start setting our decorations. Now, there's a special point, which is the middle point right here, which is where I like to put the flower urns because it hit uh, the flower urn has a smaller radius and it hits all the houses. So I alternate small gardens on the ends of each and we're going to put three flower urns at a later date. This will be just enough to get us where we need to go. Now, like I said, there's nothing here. But this allows you to fit, um, once this is upgraded, it will hit all the corners. 24 houses in a market very easily with tons of decorations. And we're not going to do anything on the sides. I'm, I've actually found that doing your markets in rows just leads to a really nice compact design that I personally like. But you don't necessarily have to do that. And now we have our double wide area, which means that we can do trails at, um, on the ends here. I'm leaving the corner pieces open, we'll probably put small statues. It's going to be really, really expensive and it's not going to give us, um, it's only going to stack once, but I think it will look nice. And that's what I'm kind of going for here. One, two, and then so we're going to have a two tile gap on each side. There we go. All right, and our village is under attack. Going to get everybody inside. It's a pretty small raid. I'm not really worried. They're not going to get away with anything. All right, village is ready. All right, that was the end of that. All right, so we have enough food. So what I like to do is pre-prep my farmland so it's as productive as possible. Our uh, our weed and rockiness is really bad right now. Our fertility is high. The fertility gain on this factor is 87%, which means that we're gonna have pretty much every time we do a clover, we're gonna have a 3% gain in fertility. Um, and this is a much easier map to, to play on. So let's get the field prep before we start growing and then I'll go into what I grow, which is typically peas, clovers, and turnips. We're a little low on people right now. And make sure that you put um, caps on how many arrows you produce. I, I scale this as I advance, but you don't need, you know, 2,000 arrows at this stage, and you don't need 2,000 bows. I typically just go for something like 20 and 40 on bows. All right, so now we're gonna plot out the other area. So I looked over how much space I have, and this is awesome because it keeps the consistency. We're gonna have the, the center section here be six tiles across. So we're gonna keep it right right about here. And so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, which is where I want it. So we're gonna put the road, we're gonna put the road right here. Now I'm moving this root cellar over here to get it out of the way. This fits perfectly into the same design. We have a one tile gap in between the market area, but two tile gaps all the way around the design. We got one, two, and one. So the housing's gonna go here. All right, and then there's my two tile gap for decorations. So everything actually wound up aligning really well. And the market area, I think I'm actually gonna need to pump, to uh, boot it up one tile this way. So that when it upgrades, it hits every corner. I may, and I may need to maneuver this around. We'll, we'll find out once we uh, upgrade. But I turned off construction for the housing. Everything's good. So we're gonna have a pretty sizable area. Now, one thing I will note is I am going to build a festival pole eventually when I have the money, but I should actually be able to build the festival pole in the middle section over here and not have to use any of the space in here. So that's great because I can dedicate this to other desirability bonus buildings. Um, I'm gonna have like a grand walkway through here. 
since I'm using a system where each area is independent and I don't need to combine things, that's going to be really great because I can have something that looks really nice in between each of the residential areas. All right, we're accumulating a lot of compost, which isn't good because you get diseases and people die. So you want to make sure you get that under control really quick. I got kind of wrapped up in all of the building and neglected that. And we're out of money and things are on fire. So that's not great. Fletcher, Fletcher. Smokehouse needs to get built up before everything. You know, these oxen have just been staring in one direction for like the last uh, five years now. I wonder what they're thinking about. The immortal oxen wandered the earth for centuries till they arrived at a small town called Bearwood. People marveled Damn, at the presence nice of the creatures and they became loved icons of the community. But the oxen became paranoid. Convinced that their immortality was threatened, they turned to dark magic, practicing witchcraft to protect themselves. But in doing so, they isolated themselves further. Consumed by their fear and paranoia, the immortal oxen of Bearwood plotted to destroy the town. With their dark magic, they unleashed a powerful curse, wrecking havoc on the innocent people who once adored them. The immortal oxen came up with the only thing they knew could ultimately destroy the village. They cursed everyone to believe that they were Mad Damon. Struggling with their true identity, the newfound delusions and confusion caused conflict, with each person claiming that they were the true Mad Damon. Ultimately, unable to reconcile their differences, each of the perceived Mad Damons fought to the death, destroying all of the village. Yeah, I don't have a clue what they're what those uh what these oxen are up to. They just they're just sitting there forever. Anyway, let's get back to it. All right. So now that they're building everything up, mainly money is my issue. I need to probably focus on getting this crappy stone out of the way so I can build a trade post. I think what I'll do is I'll just build a trade post and move and move it because uh, I do need to start trading stuff and get some money in very very quickly. All right. And it looks like all right. We got the bear. But yeah, we're we're losing we're losing our population a little, little quicker than I would like. I'm gonna hold off on the the garden trails for now because they're the gold cost is just a little bit more than I can afford. And once we get the big money coming in, we'll we'll get those back up. All right, we got our first trader. Now I put some boards over. I don't have a lot of items for trade. They're not giving me much money, but I need all the money I can get right now. I'm gonna sell it regardless. Um, they don't have anything that I necessarily need to buy quite yet. We're low on workers, so we need to kind of look at our food situation. Man, we are we are hurting. Right, I'm gonna put the SAR down a little bit. We got a work camp now, and it should be doing a pretty good job. I'm actually gonna put it to cut down any uh, any tree it sees and put it all to wood. And we'll just have it in this area. Boot that one up to three instead. More wood coming in. Looks like we got lots of firewood. We should probably make sure that we have a cap on our firewood. Where are you? There you are. Um, let's make sure our maximum here is something like 750. And we want a minimum of 250. There we go. We want to get one person in this tower to help fend off the wolves that keep coming in here. Boots us up to times three. All right. So now we're just kind of playing the waiting game. Uh, got our first market area up. I think, yeah, once this upgrades, it will hit all the housing perfectly. This is awesome. And this will be our first area. We got another trader coming in. Some of the things that I'm trying to trade right now are pelts. Baskets, herbs, things that are really easy to get on this map. Right, Trader 2, of course. They all want clothing. Um, once we get enough people, we're going to start producing clothing. One, because it will increase our happiness, which will increase the productivity of the entire population. And two, is it's a really good trade item. Uh, we should probably also get a cobbler up, because my people are getting a little sad about their shoe situation. So, let's do that. Alright, cobbler up. And this is just going to be kind of our makeshift industry area until I get it better organized. All right, we got the walls coming in here. That's not, yeah, instead of having decorations here, I'll probably just have root cellars on either side. That would be good. And we're getting raided. So let us ring that bell and get everybody inside. And they always obey all the traffic laws, which is really fantastic. Makes it easy for me to kill every one of them. And um, that's what's great about low population is you don't have to really worry too much about raiders even on the hardest difficulty um, they don't really 
pose that much of a threat until you get a high population and a high tier. Alright, there they go. That's the end of that chapter. Alright, and basket shop needs to be up, and Fletcher needs to be up. I think we're, we're okay for now. Three of three. We're out of money again. Alright. So we need to get the desirability on these up so that we can upgrade our buildings, and we need a lot of wood. Biggest issue right now is just not having a high enough population. Slow and steady wins the race, I suppose. Yeah, there's not really much uh, to this stage now. I'm just kind of growing everything. Once I get a high enough population, I'll start getting clay, getting buildings up like the hospital. Bring all the money from the market over. Wanted to keep it, but we need it. Get the towers back in motion. I think what I'm actually going to do, even though I'm low on people, is get the fishing shack up. And I want it to be close, even though I can do better over here. I want it to be close, but... um. This will give a pretty consistent yield of food. Let's get him up. And then once we get this up, we can see how many fish are actually in this lake. And I can show you what all that means. Uh, the size, like, a thing that people don't realize is, is that each lake has a set population of fish. A good fishery can get about 250 to 300 fish if it's fully optimized. So you want to take the max population of the lake and divide it by 250 or 300. Otherwise, what happens is, is you just have, you're getting the same amount of fish between this, between more and more units. So right here, you can see there's 483 fish. And it even says 80,000 80, square meters. So there's, it doesn't matter how big this lake is. You can even have a small lake that's like a little nub out in the middle of nowhere that has more fish than a giant lake. It's kind of weird. What's important, though, is the um, fishing productivity. As you see right here, we have a 180 fishing productivity. So about half the fish of this entire lake are actually going to be harvested by this one fishing shack. So I probably can only have two fishing shacks for this entire lake if I want it to be efficient. Otherwise, you risk overfishing the area and depleting. You actually get less of a yield if you have too many fishing shacks because of that. But this will be great. This will be a really good source of food right here. We got to we gotta start pumping out baskets. Baskets are great. Okay, cool. Look, he's given 19 gold for baskets. And that's what I was talking about. Early game, if you can make baskets. Huge moneymaker. So we just got 209 gold. Um, I don't want anything that I can harvest myself. I'm going to send all this money to the town center. And I'm going to start getting the uh, garden trails that are on the corners here. Because they'll hit the most houses. And we need an extreme amount of stone. And they're not harvesting stone very well. Got to be careful over here because I think there's stuff going on. They're not really harvesting this stone. Probably because I just don't have enough people. Let's put one of the farmers back. We're not getting immigrants either. It's um, I don't know if that's because of the patch being stupid or what what's going on, but gotta pull it away from somewhere. Well, at least this fisher's gonna start bringing in a lot of good food for us. And then another thing we can do is look for items that one trader is selling relative to the other. He's uh, he's buying. Yeah, he's buying shoes at 7. I guarantee you I can't buy shoes from this guy at a higher rate. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can make a 1 gold profit buying it at 11 and selling it at 12. Um, I'm not going to do that though right now. But that's something you can do. I don't want to do it. <laughs> it's just not for 50 gold. I would recommend you do it in yours, but it, just for the sake of the let's play, I'm not, I'm not going to spend great. No, Villager got attacked by a wolf and got rabies. Nice. Alright, we got... Two baskets to sell, another 38 gold. Right now we just need to get our pop-up. Our population's really happy because we got shoes and we got food. And that's great, that's an increased productivity. Um, right now though I need to get more food in if I want to get people to immigrate. I'm not going to get anyone to immigrate unless I have almost a year's worth of food. Your immigration rate really slows down uh, based on the calculations. It looks at how much food you have before it takes people in. That way it doesn't like throw you into a situation where you can't feed everyone and they die. So that's kind of built into the game to not uh, let people immigrate if you don't have enough food to feed that population. I'm going to do some stuff that's counterintuitive. I'm going to get rid of the Wainwright, and I'm going to get rid of the Sar, And I'm going to break the work camp down, and I'm just going to go as many people in the labor as possible. I have enough firewood to get through the winter, but we got to get um, got to get this stone so we can get these tails up so we can get more gold coming in. All right, we're going to get the festival pull up, too. That's, a, that's a 150 gold. 
and 10 of each, and that's going to give a huge bonus. I think we can get most of these to tier 2 by doing that. And they'll cut down the trees as they prepare this stuff, so that's great. That will get us our wood. Great, and we're losing people. I can't tell if I'm being raided now because the raid icon's just constantly on. The utter chaos. God, the hunters are down. We're losing people left and right. The bugs and difficulty. Alright, I'm even going to get rid of all of these guys. We're just going to throw as many people as we can into the labor mar labor right now. The only thing I'm going to keep going is, is the food. Food production. Throwing everyone into the labor pool right now. Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you can't slow boat. Because if I can get this going, then I can get positive income flow, and I can get get a higher population limit, which means I get bigger immigrant waves coming in. Yeah, they're getting lots of wood over here from just preparing the festival pool area. Garden, garden trails up. I'm gonna actually enable the construction of all of these. Alright, we got multiple buildings over 30 now. And we're just gonna continue to mine a ton of stone and a ton of wood. There we go, now people are doing what I tell them to do. Alright, cool. We got a good, a good food supply. Um, I think my immigration rate's gonna start booting back up. Now I need to just get that second food supply. So we need to uh, modify our farming. Get three people farming and we're actually going to do peas at the end of the year. And those peas will give us our second food variety and also give us a little fertility. But that will help us to start increasing the housing quality here, which means we'll get more gold. Which means we can build more decorations. Right, village under attack. 
Oh, they got there real quick, too. But yeah, it's never more than like two or three at this population, so it's never too big of a deal. Just two dudes beating on the side of a house. Not very, not very smart. No survivors. Perfect. Perfect. As long as everyone that attacks me dies, I feel, I feel like I've accomplished something. Mainly a gold thing holding me back now, so hopefully we get someone who wants to buy my herbs. Man, stuff is just catching on fire today. Need to put a well back here so can put out fires faster. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to save this in time. Yep, going to go. All going to go. <laughs> it's all going to burn away because everybody's too busy not, do not giving a shit, I guess. Forger back up. Basket maker back up. Cobbler back up. Everybody else. Mm, we got enough firewood to last this couple winters, so... I'm just going to let everyone do their thing. Try to get as much stone as possible. Like it's just money holding us back now. Alright. Well, if it's just money holding us back... Um... Switch him back to cutting down trees. There we go. We got a bear attack. Oh, he's dead. Oh shit, he's not dead. We don't have any money. Right, this is gonna be tricky. Spent all my money on guards. Forgot about you, bear. All right, um, cool. Got my two hunters over here. Two hunters should be able to kill the bear. Sometimes it's good to have three hunters for that reason, because three hunters can easily take a bear. Shit. All right, you gotta be, you gotta be kind of smart here and pull people out and call. Oh my god, I pulled the wrong guy. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is fun. Alright, we're getting the well back up over that corner. Got a blizzard coming in, that's not good. Got a high high food, high happiness. We should get a pretty good immigration wave, which should help us out of this bind. We're, we're almost there. This is honestly the hardest part of the game right here. The blizzards are really intense looking. I don't remember them being this intense looking. Pretty dope. We have another area for decorations around here. I might do shrubs. You know how I like my shrubs. Or, I don't know if you do or you don't, but I like shrubs. I think th I think the shrubs look really cool in the game. I think they're the nicest looking decoration in the game. I'm thinking at the beginning of the new year I'm going to get a big wave of immigration. This is pretty cool though. Got the little lake in the background. Going to be nice. Going to be nice. I got to keep this tower on protect people from the bears. They can't afford to lose anybody. And that's... Oh yeah, nice. I just got like four people. That wasn't what I was hoping for, but that's more than... more than I deserve, probably. <laughs> Considering how many people have died here. Um, yeah, this, is, this is the RNG part, is like anyone coming that can buy like the basic stuff you have. Like if I were able to have sold my herbs, I'd be really wealthy right now. Right, and then we'll get some peas at the end of this, which will help facilitate the uh, tier 2 growth over here. Right now we just need money. And then we just need some more food, and yeah, we're, we're getting close. We need to start getting clay, and getting a school, and getting all types of stuff next. Alright, we got ourselves a new trader. What's he got? What you got? Oh, he's buying baskets for nothing. Everyone here is so cheap. I was really hoping to make some money here. All right, well, I'm going to throw this back into my town. Um, use that to build the garden. Garden trails up. 
All right, let's see what the population. Our population sucks. Luckily, I had all that firewood saved up because I can't can't afford to spare the labor. All right, and the tower. This is why I had to have this tower on. These bears are. Look at this guy. These bears are suicidal, man. <laughs> 